welcome back welcome back so we have been discussing about uh, uh, different types of in uh, inventory yeah uh, so based on the position of the inventory we have seen the first three types that is raw material inventory work in process inventory and finished goods so the last one is the maintenance repair and operation inventory okay as i said before just because a particular tool or tool accessory like a fixture or jig uh, gets repair we cannot stop the entire production so we have to maintain an excess quantity of those items so those items will uh, for example in case of a machine b uh, my single point cutting tool might break down uh, might uh, uh, might get broken right uh, so i have to have a, a excess single point cutting tool in hand so those will be termed as a mro inventory so this is the second classification the third one is based on the functions okay so what is the purpose of the inventory in the production system based on the based on that uh, we will be classifying it into five different types. The first one is transit inventory. Uh, so if you are going to move uh, inventory from say uh, plant A to plant B. Okay. The movement can be either in a, a lorry or it can be as small as in a, a forklift container. Okay. Uh, so if you are going to uh, uh, move a particular product, it can be a raw material or it can be a finished cost or it can be a tool or a tooling accessory, etc. But if it is in motion, it is known as transit inventory. The next one is cycle inventory, right? So this is uh, our main, uh, 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 we'll be focusing more on this cycle inventory. So as I said in the previous example, if your uh, supply is uh, 450 and your demand is 400 at the end of each day, okay? So at the end of each day, you'll be having an inventory of 50, okay? And this 50 inventory is nothing but your cycle inventory, okay? So at any time period, it can be end of a day or a month or a year, okay? At the end of any time period, what is your, uh, what is your excess quantity, okay? That is uh, your uh, supply minus demand. What is your excess quantity in hand at the end of a time period? So that is known as cycle inventory. The next one, that is buffer inventory, okay? So buffer, as the term buffer indicates, it is nothing but a cushion. Okay, buffer actually means uh, uh, I'm preparing a, a nest or a cushion in in uh, in order to protect me from a unanticipated uh, disasters. Okay, so uh, if you are going to have some unanticipated problems like mission breakdown or a late shipment or a quality problem, I will be maintaining excess quantities and those inventory are known as buffer inventory. Okay, uh, say for example, uh, regularly I manufacture only forty products. Suddenly, there's a spike in uh, uh, demand, okay? So, if I manufacture ex extra five products, this five product is known as buffer inventory. I'll give an example. Uh, uh, following uh, the Twin Tower disaster, okay, it actually occurred in uh, 2001 when uh, a Twin Tower in America was uh, uh, bombarded by a plane, okay? Uh, do you know what small item actually was in a high demand? It was US flag, okay? So at that time, everyone turned patriotic and they were against terrorism. So in order to show their patriotism, what they did is they uh, started to pile up on uh, uh, flags. They, uh, every citizen wanted to wear flag and show that they are patriotic and they are in support against terrorism. The biggest retailer in the world, Walmart, what they did is they anticipated the sudden spike in demand. Okay, They forecasted the sudden spike in demand and they brought in uh, every supplier who's uh, making up these kind of uh, flags okay uh, the competitor of walmart is target okay so that is when target started to lose its customer uh, there was no stock for any uh, flag in target which is a retailer because Wa walmart cornered almost all, uh, uh, cornered almost all the suppliers who's, uh, who are making the flags so Walmart were able to anticipate this particular spike in demand and they were able to uh, uh, get new customers. So that is known as buffer inventory. Okay. So suddenly there was a disaster. Suddenly there was a twin tower disaster. And during the disaster, people wanted to show their patriotism and uh, they wanted to wear the flags. So hence Walmart had an extra inventory and that inventory is known as buffer inventory. So any unanticipated problem will be solved by means of this buffer inventory. The opposite of it, anticipation inventory, okay? Uh, if you are going to uh, uh, manufacture a seasonal product, for example, you are going to manufacture an umbrella. You know, umbrella will be uh, uh, sold out maximum in a rainy season. 
followed by a summer season whereas uh, during autumn or spring the sales will come down okay so you will be knowing it you will be anticipating that the demand will be very high during the rainy season so in that time period you will be manufacturing in excess so that type of inventory is known as anticipation inventory so that is one example the second one is marketing promotions okay so you are going to launch a new product in that point uh, every new product will have a higher demand if it is of good quality so at that time you will be anticipating the uh, uh, spike in the demand and you will be producing producing in excess and that is anticipation inventory that is if you are going to say that i am going to sell uh, uh, two product for the price of one product so that is a promotion right so two product for the price of one product then i have to anticipate that uh, anticipate the sudden spike in demand and i have to make sure that uh, uh, excess quantities are available i'll give you one such example the first time flipkart launched the 1 billion sale what actually happened is most of the products were, uh, were sold out at a very fast rate as soon as it launched say for example at a, a 12 o'clock it launched it at, at the end of 12 10 itself most of the products got sold out so the customers were actually very angry that they were not able to make any purchase right so what the flipkart actually did is it didn't anticipate this kind of uh, sudden spike in the demand because of the promotion uh, the, since the price was slashed down to uh, less than 50 percentage most of the products were sold out okay so if uh, you have to anticipate uh, these kind of uh, uh, spike in demand during promotions whenever you are making a promotion you have to anticipate it so those kind of inventories are known as anticipation inventory the next one decoupling inventory okay we have seen this one also uh, as i said uh, between mission a and b if you are maintaining an inventory this inventory is your decoupling inventory okay this is also known as work in process inventory so why i am uh, uh, maintaining this inventory is i don't want mission b to be dependent on mission a if mission a fails i don't want the production of mission b also to stop okay so i have to have sufficient quantity uh, in excess such that uh, uh, as soon as the the uh, uh, as i wait for mission a to get repaired the mission b should should run out Say for example, the repair time for mission A is uh, uh, one hour, so I cannot stop the production of mission B for one hour. So I have to have uh, have the uh, work in pro uh, work in process inventory that can be used for one hour. Do you get it? Yeah. So that is the third classification. So we have seen three different classifications of inventory. One is based on demand, that is a dependent demand inventory and independent demand inventory. The, the second one is depending upon the position of the inventory. And the third one is depending upon the function of the inventory. So let's move on to the next topic, that is inventory cost components. So uh, we have seen what is inventory. Uh, now let us see what are the cost components that will be incurred here. The cost components are explained in terms of two perspectives. Okay, so one either you can be a manufacturer or you can be a retailer. Okay, for that I will explain you the concept of supply chain. First, you will have a supplier, he will be providing you the raw material. And this raw material will be brought in by the manufacturer who will add some value to the raw material and convert to a finished product, right? Then this will be moved to a retailer. I will tell you what is a retailer. Then this retailer will be sending it to a distributor. Then from the distributor you will be having a, you will be having, a, you, will, you will sell out the uh, uh, product to the customer. Okay. So this chain or link that is established is known as supply chain. So inventory can be explained uh, from the perspective of either a manufacturer or a retailer. Okay. Uh, what is retailer? Okay. I, as I said, the supplier will be producing the, producing the raw material. Okay. Manufacturer will add some value to that raw material and give you the finished product. A retailer is a person who will uh, show multiple products. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, consider uh, uh, um, Reliance uh, Mart. Okay. Uh, in case of Reliance Smart, you can find uh, uh, items like groceries, you can find items like dresses, even a washing machine, even a TV. Okay, so he will be uh, show showcasing several different items to the customers. Okay, so customer can uh, uh, visit a retailer and he can select whatever item he wants to buy. 
okay so this retailer he will not manufacture any of the product okay reliance is not manufacturing that uh, uh, washing machine or that uh, grocery item okay they are just shoka they are buying from a manufacturer they are buying from different manufacturers and they are displaying in a single place where the customer will ca can come and buy that product okay so that is retailer if you uh, uh, imagine in terms of a uh, 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 e retailer that is a uh, internet marketing so amazon is a retailer uh, flipkart is a retailer so what they are doing is amazon doesn't manufacture any item it just buys an item from the manufacturer and moves it to a customer so before reaching the customer uh, the product will be uh, sorted out in a distributor right for example amazon doesn't have any uh, uh, wholesale uh, uh, whole uh, uh, like it doesn't show cost like a, 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 like in retailer they don't have any model setup you don't have a building where the customer can go and see the products and buy it what amazon actually does it through internet it displays what are the products available and if a customer buys that product what amazon do is suppose i am in trichy and i am i am buying a product okay so i am buying a product from chennai so what actually amazon does is it groups the customers in uh, trichy who buys the product from chennai and it moves that particular group of items to the distributor in trichy okay so the distributor is in trichy then from the distributor it is going to the customer okay so what it actually does is you don't have any uh, mortal building where the products are displayed amazon doesn't display its product it, uh, through internet you are booking it okay so so it collectively gathers a group of customers uh, so if you are, if uh, if there are 10 customers in tirchi what it does is it buys the products from chennai retailer and moves it to the distributor in tirchi then from this part, uh, distributor it goes to the customers uh, that is you will be getting the delivery so this is how a supply chain works so now the inventory component it is explained in terms of these two perspectives that is either you are going to manufacture the product okay so you are getting the raw material and manufacturing in house okay or you are going to purchase the product as in case of a retailer so there are two models the purchase models if you are in if you are a retailer and a manufacturing model if you are a manufacturer okay so uh, let me again tell uh, why we want to man purchase product instead of manufacturing okay uh, suppose uh, I, I am a ford uh, uh, i am a ford company manager okay so i will be focusing more on manufacturing of the engine because i cannot uh, ex uh, i cannot uh, uh, show my design of engine outside and i cannot purchase it okay because the engine is the core component so i have to manufacture in house i don't want the design of the engine to be displayed elsewhere right but i can uh, purchase the bolts and nuts right because bolts and nuts are standard items anyone can manufacture it if i say i need a m30 bolt and nut i can manufacture it from any supplier right so, uh, sorry i can purchase it from any supplier so what a uh, company actually does is it will manufacture its core items in house and it will outsource the standard items so outsource means i will be purchasing those standard items from another supplier you can ask me one question why is it not economical to manufacture the bolts and nuts in house itself right so if uh, uh, if uh, manufacturing the engine is economical in house why is it manufacturing of bolts and nut not economical okay so if you are going to manufacture bolts and nuts uh, for a car you might require say uh, 20000 bolts and nuts so uh, every time i will be having a demand of only 20000 bolts per car so for that i have to bring in a lathe machine i have to bring in a, a cnc operator okay so you will be uh, sh uh, spending lot on this if i am going to purchase that bolt from an outside supplier okay uh, his uh, his entire focus will be on only manufacturing the bolts and nuts he will be having only dedicated machines and uh, human resource only for manufacturing the bolts and nuts so he will be producing in mass okay daily he will be producing million because he will be having ford customer hyundai customer uh, a tata customer etc okay so he will be focusing only on the bolts and nuts whereas a ford company he wants to focus on his in house product as in that is uh, the engine or a compressor okay he wants to focus only on its core component if he uh, spends time on uh, manufacturing bolts and nuts it won't be economical okay so there are two cases either you want to manufacture in house okay that is manufacturing model or you have want to outsource and purchase the item from a outside supplier so that is purchase model okay so we will discuss the uh, uh, inventory cost components from these two perspectives